Here are 10 tips for you to effectively work at home. What is going on YouTube fam? So the coronavirus is here and for a lot of people, they aren't able to go to work because their business has either shut down or they can't do anything unless they physically go into the office, which is really unfortunate. But for many others, luckily, they can get their work done remotely from home just because they don't have to be at a certain place to get their work done. For instance, tech companies or finance companies and, and things like that. So for those people, I wanted to talk about 10 tips that we can do to more effectively work from home because being in the office is slightly different from just working at home. And there are some tricky parts to it. It's not as easy as just getting work done. Um, I'll talk about some of those soon. And a lot of these actually aren't my tips. I reached out on social media and thank you guys for commenting back. I'm going to share these tips that others have shared with me. Hopefully these will be useful to you guys. So the first few tips comes from Sidara, and she writes, My tips for working at home would be to find a quiet area to do your work and stay, hyd and stay hydrated. Also, make sure your space has enough lighting. So right there, there's already three tips and I'm going to break that down. The first one is to find a quiet area to do your work. So at my house, I also have a a desk that I usually like to get work done and whenever I come to this desk I feel a lot more productive uh, because I have a lot of my work uh, things to work already set up like monitors and keyboards and and it's a lot better than just working let's say from the couch or or working from the bed because it puts me in this productive mode and she also points out that uh, it should be a quiet area so that you can stay focused uh, unfortunately for me, I am in a shared area, so I wanted to add in my own second tip here, which is if you can't have a quiet area, uh, try to invest in some headphones, uh, specifically noise canceling if you can, and that will just help you uh, get into the mode of, of getting focused so that the outside distractions don't break that focus as easily. So the third tip that uh, was mentioned is to stay hydrated. Uh, make sure that you have water nearby and just take a couple of sips every once in a while. And this isn't specific to just working from home. Uh, this should also be done in the office as well. It's just I find that whenever I'm working from home, it's a lot easier to forget about everything else I have to do because people don't walk up to me and I, like, distractions actually happen less. So I forget to do things like making sure to keep hydrated. And I also want to add in my own fourth tip here is to make sure that you're taking breaks once in a while. So I, I'm i actually pretty bad about this myself, but uh, make sure that you stand up, walk around a bit, maybe go outside, get some fresh air, get some sunlight. Um, to do that once in a while so that you're not just completely sitting down and staring in front of monitors at all, the, all of the time. It, it's very important to make sure that you keep your body healthy so that you can work more effectively and can get more work done. Uh, the last thing that Sidara mentioned is to make sure that your space has enough lighting. And I think this is a really good point here. Uh, I have a, a light that mimics daylight, which I find really helpful for keeping me awake and focused. I know that in a lot of households, the lighting is actually a little bit more, uh, more yellow. And I think it's a lot more soothing, but at the same time, it's also I find that it makes me sleepier sometimes. So if you can somehow mimic either daylight or office lighting to try to keep you more awake, that should help you become focused a little bit. Uh, the next few tips come from Louis, and he, he has a lot of tips. Uh, he writes, basically try to have the nicest of everything you can afford. Chair, desk, keyboard, monitor, mouse, and bonus points for sharing a green screen or other non-distracting background for video conferencing. Um, so to go with tip number six, uh, have the nicest of everything you can afford. So having a good chair, having a good desk, having a good keyboard and monitor and mouse, I highly agree with this because if you are really happy with the things you have, uh, then that will just remove another element of, of distraction from you. Like if you have to work with a keyboard that 
that is like really difficult to type with then if you're if you have to code or write things and and the keyboard's kind of just getting in the way of of your flow then that's not going to really be very productive for you so i i agree with that louis uh and he also mentions try to have a green screen or other non-distracting background so that would be tip number seven if you have to do video conferencing um try to keep it a little bit more professional by having uh, something like a calmer background and as you can see I'm I'm also a fan of this of using a green screen for zoom purposes so you this isn't something that you necessarily have to do if you use zoom then you can also have a virtual background without any actual background but sometimes if you're in a lot of video conferences and and things are happening in the background like your family might be walking around uh, maybe you got kids or pets it can be distracting to other other of your coworkers. so that's just something to be considerate of and try to keep it a little bit more professional by doing that so thank you louis and i think so um, from that i was getting the sense that there's a common theme here of treating your office plate of treating the office space that you're at uh, treating it very much like an actual office so I wanted to add two of my own tips here. Uh, tip number eight, I wanna say prepare and commute uh, to your working space just like it would be your normal office. And what I mean by that is uh, wake up at the normal time, uh, do things like taking a shower, brushing your teeth, eating breakfast, having your morning coffee, do everything that you would normally do before you go to, um, as if you were going to the office when you commute into your working space. That that way, by the time you get to your uh, working area, then you will be prepared and you'll be in that mindset to start working. Uh, tip number nine I want to add is to over communicate. So one thing that you're missing when you're not at home, when you're not in the office, is that you can't just glance over and see your coworkers. You can't see them working or you can't see how they're doing, if they're like, happy, if they're feeling really bad. So make sure to reach out to them often. Uh, something that I like to do is in the morning is to type in good morning team uh, just to say that I'm here and I'm ready to work and having them uh, feel free to reach out to me because I am in the office and similarly you can also at the end of the day say all right team have a nice evening before you leave uh, this is completely optional but uh, it it just gives you more presence when you're not actually physically there so that would be tip number nine over communicate and for tip number 10 the last tip this comes from Alfred he writes sometimes you can change your workspace like go to the roof in the Sun and I really like this it, it um, basically you can change it up once in a while because going to the same place uh, going to your same working place day after day over and over again uh, it can get uh, mundane and and very boring sometimes. So if you can try to, maybe you can, if you're working on a laptop, just try working from your dining room some days. Maybe uh, go, like he said, go to the roof, get some sunlight, um, work from there. You might find that a change in scenery might elevate your productivity a little bit here and there. And it doesn't have to be a permanent change. It's just uh, some small difference in your working throughout your working day, maybe for a few minutes here and there, mix it up, try different things. And that can be, that can prove helpful. We'll see what works best for you. And as a bonus tip, um, we have one more tip from uh, Tiffany. And she writes, um, don't sleep too much. I would agree with that. Make sure that you're not, uh, because no one is there to to you. Sometimes uh, it can get very easy to oversleep, uh, either in the morning or after a afternoon lunch or so. Uh, she, although uh, she might be joking a bit because she also writes later that uh, she's going to take a nap. So do as she says, not as she does. Thank you, Tiffany. And with that, those are my 10 tips plus one bonus tip for working from home. 
So um, if you have any tips of your own, please share them in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video.